Can you hear me better? Uh, yeah, it's it's better now. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Uh, so nice to meet you. Uh, nice to meet you too. Um. So, I guess we just do some quick introductions. Um, mm -hmm. I'm from North Carolina. Uh, I'll be starting grad school this fall, and uh, I'm studying computer science. And I recently started practicing these interview problems, and they're really hard, so I just need some more practice. <laughs> yeah. So, what about you? Oh, yeah. Um, so I recently graduated um, from UC Irvine. Um, I was, I'm supposed to be a rising senior, but um, COVID happened and then I was thinking, you know, it's, it's not worth doing school virtually. <laughs> so I just kind of decided to um, graduate this year. Um, and I'm currently interning at Amazon right now as an SDE intern, um, which is also being done virtually. <laughs> um, so I have a little experience with like practicing for coding interviews, but um, I haven't practiced since like, what, November. <laughs> so I'm a little bit rusty. But yeah, um, I'm just trying to kind of, I guess, pick up the pace so that by the time interview season rolls in again, I'll be ready. Okay, cool. Um, so I guess we can just get to the problems. Um, mm -hmm. You said you're rusty. Are you comfortable with like what you prefer, uh, easy or medium problem? Whatever you're um, comfortable with. I'm okay with either. Um, yeah, I'm okay with either. You can choose whatever. As, as long as they're not hard problems, I think I'm okay. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll share this in the chat and then you can just share your screen. For yeah, sure. Um, um, I, was, then, I mean, would you like me to go first or do you, do you care? Or would you want to go first? I don't really care, but um, um, do you have a difficulty level that you prefer as of right now? Um, I've only done easies, but I don't mind doing a medium problem just to okay. learn something. Yeah. So, um, and then um, for your, uh, I guess, interview feedback, um, I can write like a Google Doc just to kind of um, <clears throat> give you resources and then also um, kind of tips, I guess. Okay. Um, and I'll share it with you later on. How do you pronounce your name again? Uh, Yao. Yao? Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. So I have a medium problem here. All right. Um, so, if you're comfortable solving that, if not, I can find a different one. Longest palindromic substring in S. Let me assume that the maximum length of X is S is 1000. Um, yeah, I can try it. Okay. <laughs> Did you share your screen when you get the chance? Yeah. Oh, it says you disabled participant screen sharing. Oh. Okay, my bad. Uh, try it now. Oh, there you go. Uh... Yeah, do you see my screen? Yeah. Okay. Is, is this is this part also gonna be recorded too? 
<laughs> uh, yeah, I'm just using Zoom recording, so whatever oh, shows okay. up on Zoom. Yeah. Okay. Um, so let's see, longest palindromic substrate. Given a string S, find the longest palindromic substrate in S. You may assume that the maximum length of S is 1,000. So let's see. So a palindrome has to be where the end point, the starting and end point are the same letters. So I guess what I would, um, I guess here, I would kind of start maybe with um, two pointers from the beginning and the end. So let's see. So in order to see if something is a palindrome substring, my first for maybe have a pointer from the at the start and one at the end and um, work my way towards the middle. Um, I'm just kind of flushing out my thoughts before I actually start delving into code. Um, let's see, what I could also do is I could, this is a brute force approach, but brute force, um, get every substring from the string and uh, compare it to its reverse. But doing that would mean that I would be solving this in O of um, n squared. So that's not ideal. Um, Let's see, what else can I do? Hmm. So <clears throat> let's say for example, the example Babad. If I start from B and D and I know that they aren't the same letters. What I could do is try to have the pointers, the start and the end pointers, um, go from, so basically um, make D move first and see if it reaches a letter that's the same as B. And then once it reaches the letter that's the same as B, um, then it can see if the if rest of substring are also uh, also um, palindrome. Um, and that that can be done just by being the reverse thing. Um, yeah, but if, yeah, so I think that would be okay. Um, and then this would be done up until Up until um, right up until index of B plus one. 
and then and then I would increment the B's index. Does that kind of make sense? So then if let's say for instance, so I started at D and then I would move up until I found a letter that was the same as the first index. And yeah. then I would take this substring. And then um, if that substring was um, a palindrome, and I would also have to store the max length. and um, max substring. So if, let's say for instance that um, there was a substring that was um, like, let's say it was like C and C. So like C, A, B, A, C would be the longest substring, right? Mm -hmm. um, I would have to kind of store that information. So let's um, just in case, I have found like a substring like BAB um, prior to CABAC. Um, that this wouldn't be returned as the max substring or the longest substring. Um, this would be returned. So I'd have to store that. Um, I wouldn't have to store the length because I can just take the length, but I would have to store the max substring. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. So I can start trying to delve into the code. Um, yeah, so let me, does that sound kind of okay? Uh, could you explain the part where you said it's done until B plus one? I'm a bit confused about that. Yeah, so B plus one meaning, so I kind of used um, B as an example of the first of like the index. So, um, D's pointer, it would start from the end, right? So it would go from D and then um, C, A, B, up until A. So B plus one, I guess. Oh, so like I see. the index, um, yeah. So it can't, it, it shouldn't land on the same index, right? So. Right. Mm -hmm. And then, I wonder though if there is no palindrome, I can just return any letter. Hmm. I'd have to think about that later. But does that kind of make sense? So, like for example, if I was at C, um, or for example, if I was at A, and I tried to find um a palindrome, it wouldn't find it and it would land at B. So like anything, so let's say if I had a for loop. Right. Right. Um, the nested pointer loop would end up at I plus one. Does that kind of make sense? Right, that makes sense. And would you have to mm -hmm. check like, for the beginning pointer, would you have to check every single one? Like, how would you know when to stop? I think it, I would know when to stop for the beginning pointer if once I'm at the end right here, this one. So, um, yeah, so the second to last index. Um, just because if I'm here and um, then that means that I didn't find a palindrome all throughout this, or longest palindrome all throughout the string, or not even that, but um, I basically have to go through the entire string to find the palindrome, right? So right. Um, what I could also do is I could break outside the for loop just to um, kind of make sure. So um, let's say that, I want to find the longest palindrome, right? Um, if I started, if I was at here, 
then I have the potential for finding a longest palindrome. But once I kind of go past the halfway mark, um, if the longest um, substring is longer, so if the remaining letters, I guess, is shorter than the longest substring that I have stored, then you know that I've already found the longest palindrome string. I don't need to look any further, you know? Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So, let's see. So I'll start from int i will draw i is less than um, s dot length uh, minus one and increment i. So then um, I will have a pointer int um, This is my travel name, and I will make it um, start from the last index. Oh, this is on C++, by the way. Um, yeah, and then, so, while travel is greater than I first I'll decrement trav at the end. If um s at i is equal to um s at trav then I'm going to take the substring um substring equals um I can't remember was it this I think I'm pretty sure this was a syntax. I from Trav and I will also have to check rev substring. And let me make like a function that reverses the string just because I don't remember how um, if there was a function to do so. Um, um, so. Um, then the rest string substring. Um, if so, like I said, I'd have to store the longest string, um, string long string. Um, if uh, substring equal to rev substring and um, substring dot length is greater than uh, long string that length uh, long string gets substring. So does that kind of make sense what I'm doing? Um <clears throat> so 
you're, I guess, doing the things with the pointers at both ends of the string, and then mm -hmm. if the two letters are equal or characters, then mm -hmm. you'll get the subscring, you'll reverse it, see if they're equal, so that means it's a palindrome. Mm -hmm. And then in the if statement, you're also checking if the substring length is greater than the long string length. Mm -hmm. So is it actually bigger? And then you will assign it. So yeah, that mm -hmm. makes sense. I just had a, um, an idea. So when I reverse the string, this is using another for loop. Right, so, so this is kind of increasing the time complexity. So what I can do is have um, a method that um, checks to see if a string is a palindrome, which will decrease the time complexity for me by a lot. Um, so is palindrome. And then, um, then I can just um, add the, I can just call the function and check if it's a palindrome instead of um, reversing the string and comparing those two. So um, this will have, uh, so I'll do like a for loop. For int i is zero, i is less than a dot length divided by two, um, i plus plus. So this is doing the same thing like the pointers where um, one starts at the end and one starts at the beginning and then just to see if that string is a palindrome. Mm -hmm. So um, what I'm going to do is, um, let's see, if a at i does not equal to a at a dot length um, minus i minus one return false because that's not a palindrome else if that goes all well then return true so then i don't even need to reverse the substring i can just say um check if it's a palindrome so if it's a palindrome and the substring dot length is greater than the long string dot length, then long string gets substring. Um, yeah, and then and then at the end I would probably return long string. Um, and then we had that condition where um, if S dot length minus i is less than long string dot length. Um, there's nothing more to be checked because we already found the longest substring. So then just break out of this loop. Okay. So I'm hoping my algorithm is correct, but let me try to run the code. Okay, yeah, uh, that's kind of not what I had hoped for because I was assuming that DAB would return. So let me see what made my algorithm return ABA. Um, so first it goes into the for loop. Um, then, so Trav is D. Um, I is at B. So while Trav, Trav is right now is four. So let me just um, write down just kind of here what Trav is right now. Um, so I is zero, Trav is five, no, four, Trav is four. Um, then if Trav is greater than I, while Trav is greater than I, so it goes into the for loop. If S at I, so if 
B is equal to D, which it's not. So it does have minus minus. Then it goes at A. And then it should go at B. So if the, that is the same, then take the substring from, oh, I see what the problem is. It's not substring at, so it should be substring i and trap plus one because when you take the substring, the end index isn't included. Right. That makes sense. So if I run it again, it should return b a b. Yes. Okay. Okay, let me try submitting it. <laughs> Moment of truth. Um, so B at B. Well, Trav, let's say why this did not work. So for C, B, B, D, it goes into C. So at first it starts at C. And then it realizes that there isn't anything there. So it should have gone to the next index. Let me try to debug this. By adding it as a test case. So I can try to see where um, S at I is and what um, I thought Travis. So let's try to see what that would return. Oh, let me let me delete this one first. Just kind So C D C B C B, and then it goes B D and B and B which should have written to here. Let's see if this is palindrome thing um, blocked it. So let me see. What happened? Oops. Yeah, so I don't think it registered with is palindrome. So that means that this is palindrome is wrong. So let's see why that could have happened. So it goes to B and B. So the substring should be B, B. Let's see what A prints out. For some reason, it prints out B, B, D. Huh, that's weird. So maybe it was Trav. Huh. Okay. So <laughs> so it was um supposed to be that way. Weird. Yeah, there is something in example one on the prompt that says to note that ABA is also a valid answer. I'm not too mm -hmm. sure why it outputs that. But. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see why. I see why it, it was ABA afterwards. Because at first it does this, but then it sees that for ABA, um, it's the same length. So, but I never made it um, if it's equal to two. 
Yeah, so it should have been greater than to replace mm -hmm. BAB. Um, Interesting. Okay, let me try running some night. Time limit exceeded. Boss executed input. Oh, okay. Yeah, so if it's, I forgot to check if it's an empty string. If s dot length um, is equal to zero, then return long string. If um a dot length to one return s. Actually, uh yeah, you could just make that one if yeah. Or not and or <laughs> So many edge cases. I expected a, yeah, so if there's none, then I'm assuming that, because remember how before I was wondering if there was no like longest palindrome, then would it just return any, um, anything? So right. I guess, um, if long string dot length is still zero, and return um, at that zero. No va. Uh, oh, because it's a care. Um, care to string. I guess. Okay, but that shouldn't have happened. Um, B and B should have been palindrome. Weird. So let's try debugging this. I guess you could check if it actually ever reaches your for loop. Mm -hmm. It looks like it goes into here, but I move the text to see if it goes here. Here. Okay, so it does go in there. So then, why? Why is that? Um, I should also check.
Okay, so now I guess I have to check I and I. I and Trav. Zero uh, and one. But the question is B. Yeah. So we go back to our original problem of then why was the previous one D? So then that works. But then what about C, B, B, D? I wonder why that didn't work. It does one and two, but the substring is BBD, which I have no idea why, because it should have done one and three. Am I missing out on something? I don't know what I'm missing out on. Why would it be that? Because the index is one, two. Right. It seems like in, so are both your test cases, like is the length of the input string like even or odd? Is that affecting what Trav gets? Like is the input string even or odd? Like is that affecting? No, because um, the other one was BB. Okay. So if I run those, um, the other ones come out correctly, except this one. So the other one, that is very weird. I'm a little confused. So could you go back to the test case that didn't work, the CBBD, I believe? Yeah. OK, just try to walk through what the variable looks like at every okay. phase. Okay. So let's see, at 0, 3, um, S at I is C. And what I could do is is print that. So let me see. Um, so it's at C B, then it goes to C B. And it goes to CB again, and then it stops there because it knows that it reaches the index right before. Then it goes BD, and then it goes BB, which should have worked. Um, but the substring is from one two, three, but it takes in BBD. Mm. 
Is S being edited anywhere? No. Right, because uh, let me check what the C plus plus substring function. Think so. Here, one, two, three. Oh, I know why. So the substring function is this isn't it's not the index. Oh, it's the uh, number of uh, yeah number, number of, characters. of characters. Right, I always forget that. Oh, uh, I think it's sorry, only I'm in like, C plus plus that. Yeah, that it's only. Like. Do, I've been coding in Java these days, right. so <laughs> I forgot. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, so then um. This would be um, Trav minus I, um, wait, hold on. Trav minus I plus one, right? Yeah, that would be the length yeah. of the characters. So too. Yeah. Now let's try to do that. Okay. <laughs> okay, so that works. So let's try the other ones. Um, B, A, B, A, T, and B, B, and a C, I think it was. Yeah. Okay, so now it works. <laughs> so let me get rid of these print statements just because that kind of slows down the program. Uh, okay, hopefully that works. Yeah, okay, that's time limit exceeded. What the heck? So, um, it would have tried to check if that's a palindrome but it would have to keep going like that. Mm -hmm. So this is just kind of like a runtime issue. Right. I think it may be tied to the time complexity of your algorithm. Yeah, probably. Um, okay, would there be any way to decrease the time complexity to make it so that, um, So, so what's the time complexity? Like, what do you think the time complexity of the algorithm you have right now? So this algorithm would have O of n squared complexity. Um, yeah. Because it is kind of, um, It's basically going through the entire stream mm -hmm. multiple times. So this is O of n squared, um, which is why the time limit exceeded. So uh, your for loop that's O of n, the wow mm -hmm. is another O of n. And mm -hmm. then I believe substring uh at its like base like deep down is also an o of n mm -hmm. computation i got it um huh. Let's see what we could do. So how else would you kind of approach this problem? 
problem. Um, I'm a little stumped right now. Um, let's see. So I think the optimization lies. So from from what I know of this problem, I, I believe the best uh, time complexity is O of n squared. Mm -hmm. And the optimization that you can make, because you have to traverse the string at least once, but right. how you approach finding the palindrome without doing extra iterations. Um, mm -hmm. So it, it's kind of similar to how you have pointers on each end moving in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but uh, what if you... Um, so I don't know if this will work, but uh, because I haven't actually like solved this myself, but mm -hmm. um, what if you tried as you go through the string, um, selecting like marking something as your midpoint, mm -hmm. and then moving outwards, and then continue to move your midpoint. if that makes sense. So what you're saying is instead of taking the substring, right, when you, when I come across a letter that is the same as this pointer, I start from the middle and then go on outwards and to see if that's a palindrome. I believe so. I haven't implemented this. this. This is just the a solution I saw that was O of n time. But they, essentially, they were moving. They were selecting a midpoint and then moving that within the string. I think that's that's actually um, yeah. That's I think I think uh, yeah. I haven't thought of that before. But let me try that. So essentially, um, the midpoint would be um, I am Trav. So since mid is I plus Trav divided by two. And um, First off, I'd have to see if it's um, it's odd or even. The length is odd or even. So um, if it's one and three, if so, I'd have to have two. Mid, mid pointers, so mid one and into mid two. So let's say, for example, the string was B, A, B, like A and C, and S, I of that two, or not two, one, um, and Trav is at three, then mid would be two, so if Oh, 
or if it was like the AADC, then this would be two and five. So two, five, seven, three. So then this will start at, so mid, would, mid one would be three. Let me check. So if um, I plus Trav um, mod two is an even number, then Mid one would be so if it's an even number, that means that it's an odd length. So it would be um, mid one would be um, I plus Trav five by two minus one, mid two would be I plus Trav plus one. But if it's not even, then mid one would be I plus Trav divided by two, Minus one, mid two would just be r plus trans divided by two. So if it was b a a b, mid one, um, so this is so this is one and four, which is not even. So that would be five and two. So it would start at oh wait, no, it's not minus it would be plus one, right? Five, four and one is five. Five divided by two is two. So zero one two. Yeah. And then mid two would be Plus one of that. Okay, yeah. And then if it was B A B, mid one would be um so it would be one and two, or no one and three. So one plus three is four divided by two is two. Minus one is that, and then plus one. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. And then. What I can do is while while mid one is greater than or equal to I and mid two is less than or equal to trav. Um, um, if mid or s at mid one is not equal to s at mid two, then it's not a palindrome, so we break. Let's see if that works. Oh, but then I didn't do long string anywhere, so let me. 
First I have to do mid one, decrement, uh, mid two increment for that while loop. Um, and if it is a palindrome, then I would have to store that substring. So if trav minus i plus one is greater than long string dot length long string gets the substring starting from i and what was it trad minus i plus one So then that way you don't do substring every single time. Okay, that works. Let's try A, B, C, D, A, A. Why did I think it was A? So I would probably have to check what mid is. Oh, I'd have to set a boolean actually. Um, Oh, it's true. Palindrome false. If it's a palindrome and that okay, so it ran, but. <laughs> It's only faster than 11.73%, so. Oh. <laughs> okay, I mean. But it got accepted. <laughs> very, very nice. Um, sorry, uh, yeah. I didn't know this problem was as like that complicated. Oh, no, 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 it's okay. I had a lot of fun. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think you did well and you were able to get it down to, I believe, Oven squared? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me, sorry. Um, yeah, this was a lot of fun. Thanks for the tips and guidance. That really helped a lot. I never thought of um, doing it this way, but yeah. No problem. Um, okay. All right. Uh, so I guess I'd have to choose a problem for you. Yeah. Let's see. Um, did you want easy or medium? Cause. Uh, whatever you want to do. It's okay. Do you want to try a challenge or? Sure. Let me see. What the, what was the difficulty for this? How oh. long this part of accessory? I believe it was a medium. Yeah, it was medium. Uh, uh, do you know binary search tree? Uh, I understand the concept. I may need to look up some syntax though, but I'm okay. okay. With that. Um, maybe we can try a binary search tree question. Uh, 
Let's try the maximum binary search tree one. Actually, let me see. Oh yeah, okay. So let's see. Let me put that in the chat. How do I put the chat? Ah. Uh, let me. The, the oh, okay, okay. No, 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 no. There we go. So I'll just stop sharing my screen right now. Okay. Okay, cool. Um, okay. <clears throat> Is it sharing my screen or no? No. Here we go. Wait, that one, let me. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Okay. So, oh, yeah, I guess they gave us the tree structure already. Mm -hmm. um, given an integer array with no duplicates. Okay. A maximum tree building on this array is defined as the following. The root is the maximum of the array. The left subtree is the maximum tree constructed from the left part of the array divided by the maximum number. And the right subtree is the maximum tree constructed from the right part of the array. Uh, let's see examples. of this. Return the tree root node represented as the following tree. So six, three, five, two, zero, one. Okay. I am a bit confused about like, yeah, let me reread this. The root is the maximum number of the array. Okay. The Subtree is the maximum tree constructed from the left part subarray. Uh, so I'm assuming they're meaning. So, like, if you take six, then from here, from like three to one, is the maximum number in this case would be three. And then the right, it's from right of six, it's the maximum number here. And then you just keep going. So, um, so I, I get that, but then like three from three to two to one. So, The children of three, I guess, is the max of this subarray. And then just continuing on. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So, I guess the first problem is finding the max uh, in the array because it's not sorted. Um, so I guess the first thing you need to do is find the max in the array. And then Find the next couple of numbers from like the sub numbers. So like I would need to use I guess pointers. So like once I find this max, set the pointer like limit I guess to search for right here, and then like right before six and after six. Um, and then I'll guess at the sign all these values to the tree accordingly. 
Okay. So I'm giving a vector of numbers passed by reference. So I'm just going to write an algorithm that will, I guess, print out these numbers in this order. Mm -hmm. OK, so I guess I'm going to have a pointer. So I have two pointers that, I guess, move inward to find the max. Um, huh. I'm not too sure I do that either. I guess the brute force would be to a double for loop to check which number is the maximum. I'm trying to think of a more efficient way to do that than just finding the max number in the array. Mm -hmm. um, it's not sorted, so I can't use pointers. Um, Okay, I'm just going to cut out the brute force because I can't really think of a way to find the max right now that's more efficient than O of n squared. So I'll have a variable called max. Um, and I'll set that to the minimum integer value. Mm -hmm. And then make a double for loop i is less than uh, so do you need a double for loop in order to find the max or i guess a single for loop and just replace the number the max yeah. if it's greater okay yeah that makes sense Nums that size. And then if nums, so if the value that I see in the array, if it's greater than the maximum value, then replace it. So I probably shouldn't use this int min because that's not actually an element in the array. So I'll probably mm -hmm. just set the first element. To that and then I'll check mm -hmm. the elements after that. Mm -hmm. okay. So if the nums is greater than the max and make max current value that I'm looking at. So an O of an operation. Okay, now I have the max, but I'd have to then So to print out this value, these values, like six, three, then two, then one, I would need to like find the max, then set the, like, end range to check the array to like one before that, mm -hmm. and then find the max here and do it again so it's i guess this is kind of like recursive um so. I 
I'm wondering, do I actually need recursion to do that or? Okay, I think I do. I'm not sure, but I will try it out recursively. So after I find the max, I'll need the int. I'll call it left and then right. Um, so I'm wondering if I can do both sides at the same time, like mm -hmm. instead of just checking this half, can I do, if I find the max also do this half, so I guess I could find where the first half ends and then where the second half starts based on the minimum. So I guess, I don't know if this is a good variable name, but. <laughs> First half, then, and then and then assuming that these are not always going to be at the ends, like. If the max here is three, then I want to check these two. So I would have to have the first half start as well. Um, so I go through this loop and I'm finding one max. So I find the max and then the first half start. I guess I can initialize these values to the start and end of the array. Um, so first half start could equal zero and second half end could equal nums dot length. Or this is a vector, so that's size minus one. And then, hmm. and then I found a max, so I set, I uh, settled these values, so. Um, first half, so second half end, or no, no, first half end. So the ending of the first half would equal to one before the midpoint. And then the second half start would equal one plus the midpoint. Now I know this. Um, I guess I do two recursive calls. One for the first half, one for the second half. So I guess I'm going to have to put this into a function. Um, this seems very costly though. So, I guess I can make a helper function. 
So find x on We still need a dev vector to hold all these, but okay. Uh, int and max. I want to return the maximum value I found. So and find max, and then I'll pass in nums as reference, like it was here. And I'll pass in the start, oops, and int end. Okay. So now I have the starting and ending value. Mm -hmm. So I guess I have to do another for loop. But, uh, so I guess I do this, something like this. My logic isn't really making sense here, though. So you're on I, the right track, though. Yeah. Okay. So like I, I need the max and stuff. Yeah. So I need to find the max. It's it's just the recursion that's kind of confusing. So like I need to find the max. Um. So I go to this array. I find six. And then. Oops. And then my max, I replace that value with my max. And now I have the first and second half start. And now I need a new function to do that. So that, yeah, that would be another for loop. So I guess find max where I would do First hand, well, nums, first hand start, first hand end, and then find max. So this is already open squared. Of uh, second hand start and second hand end. Uh, second half end. Those numbers. The problem is like that's only does it a second time. So like if I do six and then it'll do five and three. But like, how do I keep going to two and one and then zero? Uh, so, um, just to give you a hint, right? So, um, if you look at the input array, um, so first you find six, right? Right. Um, you can see that to the left of six is everything um, that on the actual tree is to the left of six. 
Right. Um, and to the right of six is everything that is actually to the right of six. Now let's look at three, right? So you find the max um, between three, two, one. Mm -hmm. And you see that there's nothing to the left of three, right? So this array, it seems like it's already kind of created for you in a way that um, everything to the right of a certain number will go to the right of that number on the, on the tree. And everything to the left will actually go to the left. So um, if you look at five, you see how the zero is to the left of five? Right. On the actual tree, it's actually to the left of five. And for three, two and one are both on the right. Does that, does that kind of make sense? Yeah. So, yeah. So um, I don't think you have to worry about which numbers will go on the right or left. I think that's kind of like predefined for you given the input. Okay. So I don't have to like calculate. I, I just assumed that the ones on the left had to be less, uh, but I didn't realize they were like ordered in that way. Yeah. Okay. So I find the max. And then, so I still need to find the maxes. It's just like basically, yeah. So I need to find six. I need to find of oh, this part. I need to find three and five, and then I need to find two, and then one, and then zero. Okay. So when would I stop walking? When? So if the start is greater than the end, but I'm returning into here. Okay, so as I find the max each time, I need to assign the value to the tree. Um, So I was thinking about storing these numbers in like another vector and then adding them to the tree. But it would be better if I could just, as I find the maxes, I set them to the tree. I'm just trying to understand the syntax. So I know how to do that. Tree node left, right. I'm assuming these are constructors. 
So if I set this returns a tree node, a pointer to the tree node. So I'll make a tree node called my tree. Mm -hmm. Um Okay, and this is pointers to new tree nodes. Okay, I'm a little confused on like constructing. Like, do I have to define my tree size initially, or can I just add more branches to my, or not branches, I guess nodes to my tree? I think you can add nodes to your tree. Yeah. Okay. I don't think you need to initially um, create the whole thing from the get go. Okay. But I, I need to reference like a tree node. Right. Yeah. Okay. This isn't a class, so I don't know if this is actually going to work, but. So. I'll set the tree node value. Where's my tree? Node. I may have to look up some syntax on like how to assign values to a struct. I believe it's just dot, but I could be wrong. Like if I want to do dot val equals max, would that be correct? I think it's an arrow that or um. Oh, I see. Because it's a pointer. Wait, an arrow? No, no, no. Sorry, an arrow would be used if it was a pointer. Uh, for an, I think dot val works. Okay. Uh, yeah. So when you create the tree node, would that would should 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 the tree node be a pointer? Because um, the like the way yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm returning. Um. I guess so. Yeah. So then you would probably have to, uh, no. That um, the, yeah, it should go before my tree. Yeah. So then it would be, yeah, there we go. Um, Okay. I'm still a little confused on how to do this recursively, like actually how to call, like what I just do, return find max. Like. So to give you a hint, you, you have the right, you're on the right track, right? Um, the construct maximum binary tree, um, I guess, that takes in a vector, right? Mm -hmm. um, and you want to create a tree based on the remaining vectors, right? Right. So, um, I guess, um, and that returns a tree node, right? So um, maybe you want to kind of make a way that um, you can pass in. Um, so let's say that you're starting at the root, right? So you're starting at six. Mm -hmm. 
um, you want to make it recursive so that you can pass in both um, the vector for that contains three, two, one, and the vector that contains zero and five. And that will return, if you do it recursively, that will return um, a tree node that you can use to um, build um, the left and right sides of six, right? So you're you're um, you're right in that it has to be recursive, um, and given the function, you know that you have to take in a new vector, and that will return a new a tree node, right? So maybe you have to kind of make it in a way that, yeah. So you have to make it in a way that it will take in you know, the vector um, on both sides and then return the node that six will be connected to. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay, so I'd have to... Hmm. I'm trying to avoid like creating new vectors. Um, mm -hmm. so could I just pass in like the halves and then just reference the same vector, but then just only look at like that portion? Would that be the same thing? Yeah, I think that'd be fine. Um, you know, just, yeah, I think that'd be fine. Okay. Um... And then this would return a tree node. Uh, I guess I call it this. Um, I don't, is that a keyword? In, I don't believe so. No. And then in here, I need to, again, set the max to the vowel, and then I guess the left and right pointers. Um, to null. I'm not too sure about that, but okay, so. Some nums and then so this would be the the start. This this would be the end, and then first half start. So this would represent the uh, the first half of the array, and then. This would represent the second half. If I find a max. Mm, so, so, okay, so let's, let's kind of backtrack a little bit. Um, so you want to find, let me, I guess, write it in the chat. So, um, basically what you want to find right now is, 
um, you want to find um, the max element both right and left side of current max, right? Okay. Um, and you want to create a tree node um, of the current max, and you want to create tree nodes that um, of the left and right that are connected to the uh, current maxes left and right tree node pointers, right? And um, you want to, and you know that this input array has it so that you only need to find so you this input array has it so that um, you know um, what needs to go on the left of a node and what needs to go on the right of the node, right? Right. Okay. So, so maybe. Um, so I think you were right in that approach, in the approach where um, you had a method to find the maximum um, given the indices. Okay, I, but I should be finding my max in my recursive function. Is that? Yes, okay. but um, yeah, so basically in the recursive function, the helper function, right, you want to, the goal is to find the max element on both right and left sides and create tree nodes for them and connect Right. Okay. Okay. I am still a little confused of like how would I go about connecting tree nodes? Like how do I actually construct the tree? But is it just like an array of nodes? So no, so um, you know how the tree node struct has a pointer called tree node left and tree node right, right? Oh, so it would point to the other tree nodes. Yes. So okay. for example, let's say I had a tree node um, root. This root, in order to um, create a new in order to create the right tree node, you would have to create a new tree node by doing like root, right, is like um, I guess it has like a new tree node, right? But this root right, when you're creating the new tree node, you want to make it recursive so that um, this tree, if you want to make it recursive so that um, you don't have to manually create every single node, it will, the recursion will kind of just do that for you and then return the, the tree node of root at right, right? So, um, for example, root at right will be the helper function called, essentially. Does that kind of make sense? Yeah, so 
the hover function is just constructing, I guess, the tree for me. Yeah. Um. But recursively, so. Uh. So I think in the original construct maximum binary tree method, I don't think you need a for loop there. I think you can just make it so that the helper does all the work and you return whatever the helper does, returns. Okay. So... Just gonna get rid of this. Um, so this just finds the max. Mm -hmm. And then I want to build the left and right at the same time. So I think um, setting the max as num.0 is a little dangerous just because um, for the purpose of this, let's say it's 321605, right? Mm -hmm. So let's say that you're creating, so let's say that you're creating the left and right nodes for five, right? And you want to find the maximum um, that five would be connected to, right? Um, by your logic, num dot zero would be three. So it would think that um, essentially there is no other max that, because the, the only max that five has that's connected to it is zero, right? That's the maximum number. But by your logic, because uh, max gets three, it's a little, do you see what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. It's like in recursion, like when it gets to like just here. Yeah. It's still referencing here. Yeah. So I would have to like make, I guess a copy or I don't want to, because it's passed in by reference, I don't want to be changing this. So it looks like I'm yeah. just going to have to make a copy of it. Or what you could do is you could make a, another function that takes in um, the nums vector and um, maybe indices. So like, oh, find the max just from the indices from four to five. Mm -hmm. Then it will um, essentially just find the max of the specified range that you want. So instead of having um, the max um, be nums at zero, you can you can um, make it like nums at the starting index of that range. Does that kind of make sense? Yeah. Okay, so I guess I'd make a function that finds, I was thinking of just like returning, but I don't know. Or maybe I can just do nums.start because I am, mm -hmm. this is like, if this is called recursively, like yeah. I would be inputting where it starts and ends. Yeah. Okay. Um, so. And here also, I wouldn't want to be, okay. First half start would be the start. 
second half and so I'm not entirely sure I need all these. I have a start and an end. Um, and then I go through I get to start well I'm less than the end. I think end here will be an index maybe. Um if that's how I implement it. And then if a value in this range is greater than max, set it to the max. And then I need to construct. Oops. Uh, construct a tree. So I guess I need like. Okay, so this would run in here and then it would return that node and then I would just attach that node to the tree in here. So you can actually do all the work um, inside the helper and not even you know do anything in the original method. So um, because you kind of want to create the rest of the remaining tree by passing in the start and end, right? So um, you're on the right path. So okay, let's let's start um, from the let's start from six, right? Mm -hmm. So your tree node, you create a new tree node, and you get the max. Um, and obviously, in the construct maximum binary tree, the original function, you would put zero and num dot size minus one probably right um Wait, so i'm a bit lost on that part oh okay so um when you call the helper function inside the original function what are the parameters that what what would start and end be um so the value and then the pointer to, I guess those are the pointers would be like the indexes. So to the left. Mm -hmm. oh. So you want to find the start and end, um, give them the vector, right? Or, or you want to find the maximum value initially, like even before finding six, mm -hmm. when you're first given, um, the vector, you want to find the maximum value, right? Right. So what would start and end be? Uh, zero and then the length of the array minus one. Yeah. So then, um, okay. So that would kind of be your initial call to the helper function, right? Right. So then, um, then you find the max using this for loop, right? Right. You find the max using this for loop, and then you get the value of six, right? So yeah. then you would need to make it so that, um, um, tree's value would be equal to the max, right? Right. Um, just to make a new tree node containing that max value that you found. Right. Now, um, you want to construct, so this um, construct max non-binary tree helper 
essentially returns the treat node, right? So um, what you can do is make prob you can use this recursively for both the right side and the left side, right? All right. So what you could do is call the call the left side call the helper function in order to create the right and left side and then just specify um just specify the um indices right all right so left and, and that, right can be uh, i'm saying like left those can be just like integers i guess pointers like pointers would represent like the the index range that i want to check is that the so current? that one is the constructor right so um basically th those are pointers to new tree nodes right? right so um your function the helper function returns a tree node pointer right so you can just store that store whatever is being returned um into the the tree node essential uh, into the left and right pointers right Right. Yeah, makes sense. So, um, so I have it on the chat. So, um, oh, I see. I see. Yeah. Okay. Something like that. Yeah. Okay. So this Papa, is all. would you would you be returning child? What what is child? Oh, sorry, I had You meant tree? I guess tree. Yeah. Uh, I probably don't want to construct. Oh, you it mean here. tree? Yeah. Tree. <laughs> <laughs> um okay. So understand them Thanks. and then we need to also um, yeah um so maybe wouldn't it be best um to create tree note after you find the maximum value Just so that um, you can just pass it in when you're creating the tree node. So like um, new tree, uh, tree node, tree, like new tree node and like um, max, something like that. Um. I, I understand that, but like, haven't I found the max here in this if statement? Well, in that if statement, you found the current max, right? But then you might, like, let's say that, um, so you start at three and then you come across six. What if later on in the array, you found a number seven, right? But if you create the tree node, inside this if statement, then you're essentially saying, um, like, you want to create the tree node based off on the actual max, not the current max, because that current max can always be replaced later on after you finish traversing through the array. Maybe there is another value down the line that is greater than um, six, you know? 
Oh, once the for loop is finished. Yeah. I see. Yeah. Okay. So I okay, I just find everything here, I guess. Start. So also I need the ranges as well. So probably shouldn't have them. Like. Yeah. So maybe like store the index of where max is. Max. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Max index. Then. Equals I. Mm -hmm. As well as I need to know, like, like the range, I guess. Yeah. Um, so first you have start and end, right? Mm -hmm. So for the left, um, left node, the index would probably be like, um, from like start to, um, max index minus one, right? Right. Yeah, and then the right one would probably be like max index plus one all the way to the end, right? Right, but okay. I'm wondering like, are the these endpoints always gonna be there? Like, I yeah. guess if I'm calling it recursively, I'll be setting it here. Yeah. Okay. Um, so start with signal x index. I guess for the left hand side, start would be zero. Um, it's just like I don't know like where the recursive call should be happening. That's like, so for let, let's kind of do it step by step. So for tree, first you got you gotta um set the value for tree, right? So um when you create tree, um it would be like it would be after the for loop, right? Okay. Do I need like, okay, I need a constructor. And then that would be max. Mm -hmm. And then left and right would be new tree nodes. Um, I, I, you can just, um, create a new tree node just with the int and left and right will be created without, left and right will just automatically become null pointers. You can create- Oh, like this, yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah. So after that, um, now you have to um, call the helper function recursively um, on the left and right nodes, right? So in order to connect um, in order to connect the nodes, you would have to reference tree left pointer, right? And then call the helper function Not like this, right? Okay. Because that would essentially, um, oh, oh, okay. Yeah, does that kind of make sense? 
Like that would essentially, um, you're essentially modifying the end value, you know? Um, okay. Because when you call it recursively, it thinks that end would be max and next minus one. So you don't have to worry about, because um, nums isn't modified, but start and end can be modified, right? So. Yeah, yeah, okay. So like this will just keep getting called until it reaches the end and then I'll have right. a bunch of, the tree will just have a, this pointer will point to another pointer until it reaches the end of this. Mm -hmm. Okay. There. And then I can just return tree, and that will be my entire tree from here. As long mm. as, okay. So this is, I guess, the root, and then tree left would equal my helper function. If the reference to the original input array, mm -hmm. and then my new range. So if it's on the left, then it's going to be. The start would start. probably be the same, right? Oh, OK, yeah, I pass it in. So I should mm -hmm. it. And then the end would be the mid minus one left. Yeah. yeah, so yeah, the max index minus one. Yeah, yes, right? sorry. Yeah, max index minus one. Yeah. And then left would be, um, the, I mean, oh, sorry, right. yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, it would be different. It would, the start would be max index plus one. Yeah. Then the past and end. Yeah, yeah. X. Okay. Uh, the only thing I'm confused about is like mm -hmm. my start and end is never changing. Like I get like if I get the six, and then mm -hmm. I'm doing this left side, mm -hmm. and I find three, mm -hmm. but then my start shouldn't still be like starting here should be checks like a one and two like indexes one and two not so zero. that's the right side right so um so when you call um this function again so let's say that um it sees three that's the max right so what to create the tree out left, it will need to, um, it will input start and max index minus one, which is negative one, right? To try to create the left side of three, right? Okay. So you also need to have a check to make sure that um, it's returning a null pointer because three doesn't have a left side, right? right? And the reason is because when you call the recursive function on three, um, start would equal zero while end would equal negative one, right? So you have to make sure that um, start is less than or equal to. You always have to make sure that start is less than or equal to end, right? In order to make right, sure so that I a could... node is created. Oh. So you would have to add maybe like a check in the beginning of the helper function. Like, oh, if start is greater than end, return a null pointer or something. 
so okay let me see if i can just walk through this so you get six and then say on this left side mm -hmm. um your start is zero your end is two index two mm -hmm. and then the left mm -hmm. gets called again so like you find the max here yeah so the max index would be zero zero right? and then it would call yeah. the right here yeah which is and plus that two and one yeah okay yeah so so that would kind of solve your um that would kind of solve the issue of um modifying start and end right because right. end is technically two right now and start would be max index plus one which would equal to one so then the index that the range that it would take in when it calls the function again recursively to create the right side of three would be from one to two right okay. right yeah but you also have to make sure but for the left side when the left side of three is being created mm -hmm. three doesn't have a left side right right um because um because max index minus one is because the start would be zero, right? But the end would be negative one, right? Because we made it that um, end would be max index minus. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. So. so we would have to add a check at the beginning because this for loop wouldn't run, and it would just do like an infinite loop. We would have to add a check at the beginning to make sure that start is less than or equal to end index, right? And if start is the start index is greater than the end index, then it should return null, right? Because that means that there is nothing more there is nothing to be created. Right. So that's essentially the same thing as making sure your start isn't less than zero and your mm -hmm. end isn't greater than the length of the array mm -hmm. okay so if and then this returns a pointer so i'll just need to return a null pointer yeah okay so if start Greater than n. I uh, don't really know. Oh, okay, they already have it written up there. So, no pointer. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, I can just do that at the very beginning. Mm -hmm. Um. Um, and then in the original function, um, you should return whatever the helper function returns, right? Right, because yeah. that would return the pointer to the entire tree that I created. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, I think that looks good. Maybe you want to try running it? Oh, sure. Oh, I might not sign them. <laughs> I thought it was, but okay. Uh, uh, okay, I don't even use the code, so.
Okay, let me get a restart with this. Um, I'm not even sure. Okay. Uh, oh, no. I press submit and then to press this. I do a no type definition. Oh, that is not good. Redefinition of tree node. Oh, um, Why? you, I think you need to comment that out. The struct tree node. Because we could already predefined it, so. So comment out the struct, yeah. Uh, so. Expected a comma on line 34. Oh, the int, you accidentally put an int. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yay. It works. Okay. So um, try submitting it. Oh, wow. Good job. <laughs> OK, I think so the time complexity, let's see what we're doing here. This is getting called recursively. And inside this, we're setting values. We have a for loop. Um, inside this tree. So that's L of N. And then the recursive calls on a tree, I believe is like say our input is eight times long. Like is this called like three times? Like I'm, I'm trying to, to see if is this actually a logarithmic? Like is like for every time we call this, we are I guess we're not really I mean I guess we're kind of cutting the tree in half each time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's logarithmic, and then inside that, there's also for loop. Mm -hmm. 
So it would be I, I'm not sure. squared, right? So is that log of O of log of n squared? Or am I not thinking of this correctly? Oh, like, like n log n? Um, I think it is actually O of n squared um, because if you think about it, it's like, um, so you're basically accessing every single number inside the nums vector, right? Mm -hmm. And you're also wanting to find the maximum value, right? So at worst, it would be O of n squared because you're using a for loop to traverse through everything. So that's O of n. And then you are accessing each number to create a node. So that would also, accessing every number would also be O of n. Okay. So that is why I think it is O of n squared. Okay. Uh, yeah. And I'm just like, it's hard to tell, like, am I actually splitting it in half every time? Like, mm -hmm. that's in this, I don't believe, like, we do initially, but then just iterating through the regions and then shrinking. So, yeah, that's that's not logarithmic. It is 11 squared. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Um, and then for space complexity, we're passing in nums. We're not, this is passed in by reference. We're not making a copy here. We are making a tree of size n. So I guess this base complexity is O of n, or I guess, yeah, I think it would be O of n for the space complexity, unless I don't understand like how trees work underneath. But like, mm -hmm. I'm assuming because we're just copying the elements in the array into a tree structure, mm -hmm. it's our size. Our size complexity is dependent on how large the input is. If the input's ten, then our tree size is ten. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't really know how to optimize this. I don't even really know another solution. The, the recursion is really the only way I could think of doing it. And I didn't really know how to, like, I understood, like, the process, but I didn't really know how to, like, implement it in the code, like, where to call the recursion and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so can you give me an email that is most convenient for you? Let me share my screen. Uh, oh, okay, it says I can't share my screen because you're sharing this. Oh, okay, I'll stop. Um, how do I stop sharing? Okay. Uh, let me share my screen. Um, yeah, so I kind of created like a doc just so that, you know, you can just, just my commentary while you were self. Let me share this to you. Do you have an email that you like to use? Yeah, you can just do, I can send it in the chat, actually. Okay. okay. Yeah. Thank you. Um So um, I, you had like a really good approach to the problem. 
um, and it was, um, and then you got it right in the end, so that was good. Um, I guess the main issue was you weren't too familiar with binary search tree. Right. Um, but I think, like, for someone who isn't, like, um, super familiar with binary search tree, you did a really good job of approaching the problem. So I was, like, really surprised. Um, and so I guess the main thing is, you know, just to study up on binary search trees and um, how to basically construct the binary search tree. Um, and then also study up on how pointers and constructors work because, you know, pointers are something that, you know, it's hard to really grasp. <laughs> Um, and some resources were, j these are just, you know, um, I guess links to, um, information about binary search trees and leak code actually has like a lesson plan mm -hmm. where you can learn about recursion and, um, binary, binary trees and such. Right. So I think um, doing those lesson plans, they will be extremely helpful to you. Um, let me try opening up the binary search tree one. So for example, it will like have traverse a tree introduction. Um, what is in order traversal, post order traversal and all that. So like, and then it will have like problems at the end that you can solve. and stuff and it will also give like solutions too okay so i think you know trying this lesson these lesson plans out would really help you um if you just want like more coding um problems experience i recommend um firecode.io which is um a coding interview platform where you can it's kind of like leak code but right. um it's it's more similar to hacker rank than it is to leak code um and it's it assesses your level and then based on your level it will um give you coding questions based on that and you're kind of going up the level instead of how leak code lets you do any level you want and right. such. Um, and if you want to know like what problems that are medium level are more approachable, um, you can actually look at the acceptance. And if you look at the acceptance, basically it'll tell you like, hey, how many people, you know, looked at this problem and actually were able to solve it. So for example, like even this is an even if this is an easy, um, only thirty four point five percent of people who attempted it were able to actually solve it. Uh, yeah, so I think that's kind of helpful in gauging, you know, your difficulty level and such. Okay. But some medium problems that have higher acceptance are easier than easy problems that have a much lower acceptance so that is kind of how you can gauge um you know where you're at and uh, like for example like the problem that i had what was it the palindromic longest palindromic substring i believe yeah largest Largest polynomial. Why is it not showing up? Oh yeah, here. Yeah, so oh, this one has twenty nine point four percent. Yeah, so um, basically, you can kind of like um, see the acceptance rate. 
and um, start from there. So let's say that you wanted to just do medium problems. Um, I wonder if this, okay, no, that won't work. Yeah, so you can also kind of sort by like topics that you want to try. Um, let's do medium, um, sort by acceptance. Why sort by acceptance? Anyways, um, yeah, so you can just kind of see, oh, that's why. It was because I was up there. Yeah. So you can try like these ones, which have a 90.1 acceptance. And then that will just kind of get you more familiar with medium level questions, but um, on medium questions on the easier side so that you can, um, you know, it's also, it will be much, it will be harder than um, easy with an acceptance of 90.1%, but um, it will definitely like give you a good starting point to medium questions. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'll check that out. Thanks for making all those notes. No problem. And yeah. then um, let's see, what else is there? So interview, yeah. So there's this place called interview bit and um, this place kind of like tells you the interview process and like some questions that some companies had. Um, interview cake is also a good resource where you can see, you know, interview questions and stuff. Um, I can link these to you. Um, because I think they might help you a lot. Um, what was another, what was another interviewing.io? This is where you can watch mock technical interviews. Oh, I've seen a couple um, of those, actually. Yeah, um, these are really great, um, just to see and and they tell you um what um language they use um the tags aren't updated here right now but it's like this one's in javascript this one's in c um this is in c sharp this is in java so yeah so um i think watching um interviews is super helpful and stuff. So yeah, um, you did really good today. <laughs> Thanks. You as well. Um, you. Yeah, I don't really have any feedback for you. I mean, you solved it pretty well, even being rusty. Um, but yeah, I'll definitely check out all those things. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I definitely I definitely struggled with like just not understanding how to make like a binary search tree and just like mm -hmm. concepts on recursion and stuff like that. So yeah. yeah, but those are something that you can definitely improve with time. Like, um, like I think it took me like like a good half a year <laughs> to understand binary. Even now, I still don't really understand binary search trees that well. So it's like, you know, it's the struggle. And then, yeah, but, um, you know, I think, I think you're on like a really good track for someone who, you know, doesn't have much experience with binary search trees, you solved it really well. So I was pleasantly surprised. <laughs> okay. Wait. I mean, yeah, that's all that I have, but uh, thanks mm -hmm. for yeah, doing you. this interview. I know we went like way over, like an hour it's over. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I had a lot of fun. Yeah. Thanks. Me too. All right. Have a good one. You too. Bye.